Well, today we're going to do a little video on air carbon arc gouging and cutting. Uh, the video is going to be shot here at the shop at Hennepin Technical College. And I'm going to do most of the work. And you guys will get to see kind of a cool little video on how to set up our machine for what you're doing for cutting. Hope, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Which is the machine we use down here at HDC to do our carbon arc work. Um, it's actually two power sources that have been paralleled together. Uh, and we'll get into a little bit more explanation here in a couple okay, minutes. The reason we use these two machines is because they're parallel together on the front. What does that mean? That means these two machines are set up in a stack. And they have two power cords that come out of the back. One for the upper machine, one for the lower machine. And then the two cords run back to the outlets. The drawback to this system is you have to have two 30 amp circuits to be able to supply each machine with 30 amps of input power. The advantage of this is I can use machines that are much smaller to do the same kind of work as it would take to do to use a much larger machine. Okay. We're back here at the front of the machine. We got all this lead wound up on the front of here. First thing we want to do is pay out all this lead. Okay. I took care of taking all the lead off the handles. And now you guys can kind of see how the leads are both come together into one connection there. And then the other connection is right there. And if we go back towards the machines, you can see how they're hooked to the front of the machine. So you have a positive to positive and then tied together. And then you have negative to negative and then they're tied together. That's the basic setup for how to parallel a machine. Uh, we parallel the machines because we're going to be pulling almost six, seven, eight hundred amps off these two machines. In order to get to those higher amperage levels, I got to have both machines to be able to get to there. Um, there's a pamphlet from Miller that I learned how to do this out of, and it basically shows this basic connection in that pamphlet. Okay, this is a carbon arc torch. This is the handle. You see, it's got a black button here, and it's got this other end. If I roll it over, you can see it's got holes in it. It's also got a lot of damage to it. We're going to talk about that here in a second. Okay. The way this damage gets caused at, out here at the end of this is they got the rods when they were gouging way too close to the, to the holes in this handle. There's four little holes here. And when you put the rods in, you're going to put them in so that the holes are on the underside. Right now this would be upside down. So we want the holes to be on the bottom. That's the big key to carbon arc, is you got to have the holes on the bottom. This button will push from either way, but when I push this, the air is going to come on as soon as I hook it up. But the front of this is a little mangled because everybody seems to think that this thing is indestructible and it's not. The ends of this are made out of Bakelite and it can be, they can be replaced. That's the biggest plus to these is they're a pretty serviceable tool. Okay, so this big heavy black hose carries the current that goes all the way back over there and it's got a big end on it where everything kind of ties together right over there. And you can see where the air hose comes into the back of that. This is what's known as a concentric cable. That shows up on a test by the way, the concentric cable question. There's a cable within a cable or a hose within a cable. All MIG guns are essentially concentric cables. Um, just as a point of reference. But once you get this all set up, that connection becomes a bigger piece. Okay, so this is the connection that's under that little black boot. It's got a piece that brings a cable in, the power cable, and then it's got air that hooks to it. If this thing is ever exposed, it is a safety hazard. All the amperage that comes into the machine, that comes into the torch, comes into this lug right here. You don't want to touch this or leave it exposed. You will get a shock if you get between it and the work plant. Okay, we really have two types of carbons that we use here. We have these flat ones that are kind of wide and flat. This will dig uh, a kind of a square bottom flat groove. Good, really good for washing, 
uh, really good for just taking different kinds of uh, materials off. Makes kind of a square groove. And then we have round ones. These are pretty much what you're going to see. Uh, by and large out in industry, you're going to see a lot of these. Some of them have a hole in them. Some of them are, they're able to connect together. You can automate this process with a track. Uh, done that. It's a very noisy operation. This machine in general is going to make a lot, a lot of noise. Uh, first of all, we're going to be using compressed air. Second of all, we're going to be using two power charts and we're going to have them maxed out. So it's going to be running, it's going to be, everything it has is going to go into doing this process. This process will remove quite a bit of material. It uh, is ideal for removing bad welds. It's ideal for putting in a bevel or a U-shaped groove uh, on a weld. It'll do cutting and if, if asked to, uh, it can cut through something. That's a little trickier process, but it, it can do it. It really is designed for gouging and metal preparation. Okay, both machines are on. As you can see in this one, I got it set at about 400 amps. That's pretty much its maximum limit. The lower one is set to 375, which is its max limit. Now underneath this door is a little display, and this display is really hard to read. Um, I don't think we'll be able to see it with this, but we'll give it our best shot. That's it. Okay, that little display is going to tell us something. If you push that button, we can cycle through that display by pushing those buttons. And what we want is we want to lock the contactor on and we want to, we want to take out any kind of remote. Uh, we don't want it to be in any kind of remote control. The lower unit is set up on so that it's controlled all at the panel and that the contact is always on. That's the big thing there. And the, and the lower unit is maxed out as well. Okay, this upper unit, it needed to have the contactor closed. When the contactor is closed and this thing is ready to go, you're going to see 86 on one side and 400 on the other side. This thing is now live, ready to carbonate. Uh, we'll talk about the other end here in a second, but basically as a little recap, we plugged both power sources in to the, to the wall. We brought the primary power forward to these two machines, and then we ran the leads out that were all hanging on this hook, and we ran the leads forward all the way out to where we're going to actually be doing the carbon arc. And that's pretty much how it sets up. Um, if you have any big questions beyond that, you're going to want to get the instructor involved, whoever that may be, either myself, uh, Frank, uh, Pat, or Paul, and they should be able to help walk you through it. If you, if you turn on the upper power source and it's making kind of a high pitch whine and you don't have that 85 volts showing in that upper deal. That means you do not have the contactor, you do not have the contactor closed on the upper power source and it will not work. You will only be running off the lower power source and that's not enough to make the rods do what you want them to do.